most deaf. Um, I think even just, you know, being in the scene too, um, like even like just speaking on your experience too, uh, so with the Me Too movement and Time's Up still going strong, uh, what are your thoughts on those movements and do you feel like it's something that's needed to happen for like any industry, especially with the Toronto like music industry in this sense? Yeah, man, I think that shit is just like chickens coming home to roost, you know, like you can't act a certain way with impunity and expect the other shoe not to drop, right? Um, a lot of people try to frame it as like there's going to be opportunists in that movement. And I think that that makes up maybe like 5% of it. Uh, I don't think that that's like the forefront of that movement, you know, Uh and yeah, I think like, you know, we're just seeing how fucking creepy the people who made all of our favorite family films really are. And the shit that we used to all joke about as teenagers kind of turned out to be true. <laughs> you know? And so I hate to say I told you so. <sighs> but I fucking told you so. No, I mean, I didn't tell anyone shit. I just, you know. Uh, popular culture always felt very fishy to me and when the news comes out that some of the pillars of the aforementioned popular culture are fucking vampires I'm not surprised uh, you know yeah most definitely I mean Kevin Spacey just even got like a new charge um, out of the UK for like molesting like a boy or something like that yes. uh, I think he still has to deal with like travel like right now for that um, even though he got acquitted for like all these other cases, cases which I don't even un understand at that point too. But uh, even Toronto, um, I don't know if you know about this, but there was like a page that used to happen in like 2018 called like Toronto Abusers, in which a lot of people in the rap industry in Toronto were sort of exposed for violating certain people in that sense too. It could be both genders in that sense, and there's a list. Um, I don't know if it's reflective in your in your scene, but like more so in like mainstream toronto rap like a lot of like well-known like well-known names were on that list too so you know just even speaking about that i don't know if you've noticed or seen like any experiences where um like sexual harassment and like abuse has happened in your industry by any sense i feel like i mean it's funny because a lot of the sexual harassment i've seen is actually in under other industries um no but i guess it's also in music too yeah let's be real um, a lot to answer there. I feel like definitely there's been some stuff that I've noticed coming up. Uh, I feel like, you know, certain things are like clear lines and sand and other things you sort of learn as you go along, um, in terms of like, that's not right. You can't talk to people that way. You can't make those kinds of jokes, shit like that. You know, uh, the hope is that we all kind of refine our moral compass in a way that helps everybody thrive, right? That's that's the goal. So, yeah, we want to put a stop to people doing fucked up shit that hurts other people and takes time away from your life where you have to recover from the thing that someone else did. Uh, life is short. Let's not waste each other's time. And, yeah, I mean, like, it's... It's also toxic because, like, so much of music is built on, like, like, the pursuit of music can be built on validation, and that can be dangerous because validation can also come in the form of lust, and lust can make you do dumb shit and make you make people uncomfortable if you're not paying attention uh, or if it's not reciprocated. And so, you know, you have to also be cognizant of that. Like, maybe you got into this music thing because you felt disconnected from the world. And now that you're getting attention, you got to, like, you know. Like, maneuver in that sense, actually. So. You got to just be aware of, like, how you react to attention and make sure that it's healthy, you know. And, like, I don't know, especially for me as, like, an only kid, like, you know. Even I had to, like, learn most social interactions because I have no brothers or sisters and shit, right? So I don't. Yeah, I didn't know what the fuck normal was. And you know, sure shit wasn't getting it from my parents. So, yeah. Um, you know, so that's all learning process. I think, like, going to bring it back full circle, I think Me Too is like, um, come on. Like, we've been saying this shit for fucking decades. So now, you know, actions are going to speak louder than words. And you are going to be publicly dragged, tarred, and feathered. Um I guess, yeah, those are my thoughts on it. You know, it, 
And then, like, a lot of people like to talk about cancel culture. Like, it's this, you know, Twitter mob. But really, it's just everyone being like, don't be an asshole. Like, stop being an asshole. Like, it was cool to be an asshole in the 80s, but it's not the 80s. And fuck the 80s, also. Like, fuck the 80s. So, we're doing shit differently. It's no longer the 80s. If you act like it's the 80s, you're gonna get canceled. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it, I wasn't even around for the 80s, but like, you know, I don't know. Am I on to something here? Does this shit sound crazy? <laughs> I mean, you made sense in that, in that point, so I do feel like change has to happen, and I do feel like we can't, you know, go into a, like an old position that we've done so many years, you know, with the old norms and old practices that we used to do, like with the whole, like, boys we boys like type of effect you know like i do feel like we have to like look into other groups and like how they're affected in that sense too and i do feel like change starts with you know understanding like what band what boundaries are like what are certain people's um norms and like what's acceptable versus like what's unacceptable what's a safe word versus like what's not so safe in that sense too body language too like a lot of important points too in that sense and I think, like, the best place to start with all that kind of stuff is to really, like, do the work on yourself as men to analyze, like, the toxic masculinity you may or may not possess. We all kind of have traits and shit because, like, and to paint this picture for you, when I was a kid, uh, I essentially was like, okay, I have to be, like, when I was in grade four, five or whatever everyone was getting girlfriends and shit and i was the only one who didn't get a girlfriend and i was like how come i'm not getting a girlfriend and my experience was you gotta be was this like disney movie experience where it's like i'm gonna be the nice guy and da, 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 da. uh and then everyone around me was treating the girls like shit and they were responding to that and i think that was like this toxic masculinity kind of like 90s era culture that we were in where it was like reinforced but i was always like wait really this is the thing we're supposed to do i thought everyone wanted to be like romanced <laughs> and i was like super weird and corny as a result i think i like carved soapstone for this one girl it was it was extra um but anyways all that just to say that like all this shit that i used to like ask the other bros like so wait the girls like it when you like insult them and shit all that shit later down the line turned out to be like really fucked up harmful bullshit that you know uh people teach each other and that eventually turns into this like toxic masculinity or if you want to venture even further one might say patriarchy uh where we feel like there's specific roles that we have to embody and specific ways we have to act that are manly and that all that shit is dumb and antiquated and was invented by very insecure people so you gotta just be you and do it in a way that doesn't fucking hurt anyone that's it it. most definitely you know it's even crazy too um because when we talk about like consent too i do feel like it all started from elementary school in that sense too like the teacher they'll tell you keep your hands to yourself and put your feet on the ground and they're really teaching you consent in that sense too. Don't touch people unless they want to be touched too. But I do feel like in this society, I feel like we forget that motion in that sense too. We forget that like whole like alert in that sense too because I feel like our needs and our like wants in that sense too like overshadow like what we like follow and what we practice in that sense too. And I do feel like that's a major problem too because with some schools like not teaching it or like not even being taught at home like hey don't touch this person you know like even like a kid will say stop touching me or stop and then that kid won't listen that's equivoc- like equally the same as a girl feeling uncomfortable like when a man like touches her in like a certain area in that sense too so yeah and it's like what are the lessons you teach the child when that happens right you know it's like a lot of playground shit is like, oh, they were just horsing around. It's like, well, that's the wrong lesson. <laughs> the, 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 the assault is not just horsing around, you know? Maybe shame the kid. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, I know some kids would just get sent to the office or, like, they get put, like, in the corner for a bit too, but I think now, like, there is no punishment 
n like nowadays too like mm. even if we have this whole reward and punishment type thing you know things that should be punished you know like such as like sexual violation harassment assault rape they get rewarded in the weirdest way with acquittals yeah. with dismissals you know paying off certain people to and basically we're not teaching people like the right way you know it's just like hey you know we could pay to get out of jail in that sense you know so well that's because you have two societies on top of each other where it's like the one that they teach you in school where it's like you know you should be a morally good person and work hard and this but then like the actual one that exists which is like uh laws don't apply to the rich because all punishment is financially based and so they can buy their way out uh and straight up like you know i had a friend whose father told him everyone's a whore for the right price what do you fuck do you think that does to a kid you know <laughs> he's an accountant now so voila you know uh we are what our parents teach us and a lot of people haven't been given the right kind of skill sets to be parents and you know it like just always comes back to like it takes a village to raise a child right and most of the time i just see two very overworked tired people raising a child and that's not gonna be a recipe for success uh you need to have engaged teachers you need to have just engaged just you know the world around you maybe multifamilial homes and shit i don't know um but a lot of the teachers i had were just super like clock in clock out uh or vindictive fucked up evil sociopaths <laughs> yeah, nah, most definitely, man. Uh, you know, to get on to like a lighter note too, I don't think we've even like talked this and like talked about this in like the previous interview. But how did you actually get your stage name? I don't know if it, that is like sort of like remnants of your actual name, like R Meyer Clarity, or if it's just like something you just made up like on the spot too. Yeah, it. Uh, the name chose me, not to be like corny about it, but um, like I used to just go by Clarity because I was trying to find. I wanted to I wanted something that I could both write as graffiti uh and have as a rap name and all my favorite rappers started with C. It was like common and classified and shit like that, cunning linguist. Uh so I was like I need a name with a C and I was bumping Guru featuring common state of clarity and I was like clarity is the name. That's the name. And so for years I just went by clarity, but on Facebook my name was Meyer Clarity cuz my actual government name is Meyer. Um, and people just started calling me Meyer Clarity at every show and I would always correct them. And after a while I stopped correcting them. And then after a while it just became the name because I realized that Meyer Clarity was a little more unique than just Clarity. And there was also a fuck ton of other Clarity starting to pop out of the woodwork and it was getting really frustrating. So I was like, okay, well, I definitely am the only Meyer that I know of. Uh, so that's going to be my name.